Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Carbigato. Welcome to this Wednesday morning. And you're going to want to save this. This is going to be one of your favorites. Oh my goodness. Get ready to be blessed. Amen. God was giving me a message, of course, but what else? Through my life in order to share with you such strength of encouragement so that you can be blessed this day in the Lord. As we draw near to Christmas Day, I just pray that you are safe in your travels. And as this Arctic storm, Elliot, blows across the USA, let's be in prayer for one another. Amen. I have a lot of people that are messaging me that are in the path of this storm and it's going to get really, really cold. So be praying for everybody and also for the homeless. And what is amazing is Elliot, which is the name of the storm, means the Lord is my God. Is that not phenomenal? That even in the midst of this storm, we're reminded that the Lord is our God. Amen. Good morning, Candace and Rebecca. Timothy, God bless y'all, and Lee, God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. It is going to be such an amazing broadcast. This week has been phenomenal. If you have not watched the broadcast, even last week was phenomenal. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Table It. If you don't know where it is, message me, and I will be more than happy to get that channel for you. And that way you can just click on the different videos and pull them up and be encouraged. Amen. And so today is about honor. You know how amazing it is that God had me start out this week about insecurity breeds contempt, which is dishonor, disrespect. And then yesterday, God just stirred my members with the power of Holy Spirit to bring the message of truth of how God's word blossoms within us and draws the kingdom of heaven, how eternal life is inside of our members, and it just draws the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And so today I'm going to expound on that just a little bit more as we look at honor and the Lord shows you that he honors you. And wait till you find out what this word means. It is so powerful. I got, we got, Rich and I, our vehicle back yesterday right at 5 o'clock, okay? That is when the auto repair shop closed. So it had been almost six weeks since we had our car. We were really glad to get it back. I miss the BMW SUV. It was really nice. I really enjoyed it and felt like it was my own for just a small time. But you know what? It is so funny because a couple of things. We were going to wash the car before it ever got in an accident. We were always talking, we need to take the car, get the car washed. We need to just go through the car wash and wash the car really good. And it's so funny because of the repair and they had to put on an entire new rear end, literally both back sides, as well as a whole new trunk. So the whole back end is brand new. They had to order all those parts and they painted the, it looks like they painted the entire car. I know they say they only painted the back, but the paint was that orangey red. It's actually called fire orange is what it's called. And so they said that paint was difficult to match, and it looks like they did the whole vehicle, but the car is washed, and we didn't have to wash it. It was washed after they repaired it, and this is the thing that Holy Spirit started speaking to me this morning as I asked God. I'm like, God, when we woke up about 3, we wake up at 12 after 3 in the mornings to get ready to go work out. And I was just speaking to the Lord in my heart. And I said, God, what do you want me to share with everybody today? And he said, Robin, I'm going to reveal truth to you. And I said, well, praise God. And he said, you know how your car, y'all's car got rear-ended? And I'm like, yeah. And like, it was so crunched in and there was a big hole. 
in the back of it, and the sides of the back were popped out. They buckled out. Like, it just crunched it in, and the sides buckled out. And there was a big hole on top of that where the vehicle just, boom, went into it. And I said, yes, Lord. And God said, you know what? Sometimes your past can be like that to you mentally and emotionally and spiritually speaking within your members. And y'all have heard me talk about this over and over and over with the twister theory of Roger Penrose, the physicist, where I've taught the twister theory in what was called the Alpha and the Omega Watchmen's Workbook Conference, which will be eventually brought out onto Amazon. The first Watchmen Workbook series that I brought out was Rev 222. I have many series, God's Firewall School of the Prophets, God's Firewall Healing of the Soul. I've written 36 workbooks on God's Firewall School of the Prophets. Four of those have been revised and edited into book form and are on Amazon. And three of God's Firewall Healing of the Soul have been revised and edited, of which I did 24 workbooks and brought out on Amazon. And the Watchmen series, there were about eight. And so I brought Rev 22.2 out first in the edited version on Amazon. So the Alpha and the Omega is another Watchmen workbook that I wrote many years ago. And it is the whole book of Esther with Revelation 1. And in that workbook, God had me teach on Roger Penrose, the twister theory. And I've brought this to you before, but it's necessary to repeat. It bears repeating so that you can get it, so that you can get that aha moment, right? And Roger Penrose, a physicist, came up with what is called the twister theory, okay? The twister theory. And let me go ahead and go to Shutterstock so that I can get this image of an hourglass. Hold on one second, because it'll just help you perceive it. And so Roger Penrose does the twister theory, and he does it through showing an hourglass. In fact, I'm going to pick this picture because it's so, so pretty. And he does the revealing of what is called the twister theory that's similar to the string theory, and I don't want to get into all of that, where it all starts from what physicist scientists call the big bang which we know is genesis 1 3 where god said let there be light and that the very smallest uh, elements within our universe were created at that time and they just begin to expand into other elements and just grow and enlarge and create all that there is which we see as genesis 1 right the entire book of genesis 1 and one of the things that Roger Penrose said is that that light is in the past, but it's also in our present, and it's still going into our future. Now, think about this, because I'm going to bring to you what I taught in the Alpha and the Omega about grace. And to the degree that you receive grace in your past, it presently is the degree that you can go into the future and see the future, hence prophecy. Hear the word of the Lord to move into your call. And so, with twister theory, he uses the hourglass, okay? And so, this is the past. Instead of the sand going down, imagine the sand going up. This is the past. This is the present. This is the future. And so, his theory is, is that light, where there is the big bang, let there be light for us. It is in our past, but it's also in our present and it's still going into the future, which is how the universe expands and time continues to go on. God showed me as I did that teaching, the Alpha and the Omega, Revelation 118, I think, is actually, or Revelation 1 was that training. God showed me, he said, Robin, to the degree that you receive grace in your past presently, is the degree that you can prophesy and see into your future. And people might say, well, what is prophecy? The Greek word for prophecy means to foretell. It indicates being able to foresee. The gift of prophecy in 1 Corinthians 12 is a gift that is used by the Holy Spirit. It is one of the gifts of Holy Spirit. 
and it's according to the need, okay? All of the gifts of the Holy Spirit are according to the need. If there is not a need, it's not going to operate. There has to be a need. And we see this expressly in Luke 11 as we see the core prayer that Jesus gives us in Luke 11, how to pray to God in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And in that prayer is, give us this day our daily bread. Immediately after that is the parable about the bread. And it shows that God gives as much bread as needed, okay? And then after that is Jesus emphasizing, ask, keep on asking, seek, keep on seeking, knock, keep on knocking, and the door shall be opened, and my, my Father will give you the Holy Spirit, okay? And so, all the gifts of Holy Spirit are according to the need. Therefore, prophecy, one of the needs, as we see even in 1 Corinthians 14, prophecy is to edify so, one of the needs that might be present is when people are discouraged. Therefore, God stirs Holy Spirit in the members of the individual or in the members of somebody else that also has the spirit of understanding upon them at that moment, like Abigail in 1 Samuel 25, prophesying to King David or David before he was king. And David was discouraged that when somebody else prophesies to you, they're going to have the spirit of understanding, and that is book five of God's Moral School of the Prophets, and that should be the next one to come out on Amazon in School of the Prophets, and that will probably be out in two years. And prophecy edifies. It lifts up, and it causes our eye to be set like flint and to look forward and not to look back and not to be captured in the present. Therefore, here we go, to the degree that presently in your life where you might have insecurities, where you might have areas with issues in your heart you're wanting to get free of is evidence that you haven't received grace in your past presently. And you're like, Robin, I don't understand. What does that mean? It means that your past has not been made beautiful. So let's look at a few scriptures, and we're going to look at Ecclesiastes 3 so that you can understand verse 10, and you can understand how the Father is, okay? Ecclesiastes 3, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to heal, a time to break down and build up, a time to kill, a time to cast stones, a time to gather stones. And so you see these different times, and the emphasis is time. Here in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 10, Scripture says, I've seen the painful labor and exertion and miserable business which God has given to the sons of men with which to exercise and busy themselves. He has made, verse 11, everything beautiful in its time. So everything of your past is made beautiful. Hold on, somebody keeps messaging me. Hold on one second. Okay, I can't get to them. They keep sending me text. I meant to cut it off. Everything is made beautiful in its time, okay? Therefore, even where you are presently, although you've had trauma or issues or hurts in your past, God makes it beautiful. He makes it holy. How does that come about? He heals you of that hurt where you let it go, where you release it and you're not holding on to it. So it doesn't influence your perception about others or circumstances about God. And instead you can enter into the plans and purposes of the Lord. And so, with this hourglass, we see that as we look at this, and if this is our past, this is our present, and this is our future, that God's light, we see the grace that although we might have had issues in the past, guess what? What does grace say? I've learned to, to love, 
excuse me, and I've learned to live. Remember the three L's yesterday? Love, live, learn. So grace is the evidence that no matter what has happened in your past, you've learned to love, to love those who hurt you. You've learned to live and to triumph over that. You've gotten over the learning curve. Is that not powerful? That's the evidence that you've received grace. If you're not loving, if you're not living life to its fullest, you haven't received grace in your past. So it's presently hindering you and you're not able to move forward. You're stuck. As we receive grace, this is what God showed me. He said, you know how you got rear-ended? And I love the scripture where scripture says, you know, God goes before me. And that is Matthew, uh, that is a James 1, 27, Ephesians 3, 20. It is Deuteronomy 30, 31, 8. It is also Matthew 7, 25, 20, 25 through 27. And the glory of God is your rear guard. And that is Isaiah 58, 8. Is that not amazing? Because 8 indicates infinite eternity where God is making everything beautiful in your rear, in your past. His glory covers your past. It covers your back. And so as we got a whole new rear end, and you know, God said, Rob and y'all were driving around with that rear-ended car, and it had this big hole in the back. The trunk, the sides are totally buckled out. Rain is coming in, and it is just open, okay, for the elements to come in and make things worse, to cause it to rust and all that. It's not sealed tight and free from the elements of this present age. Holy Spirit comes in. He seals us unto the day of redemption. We see that in Ephesians 1, that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. And that that sealing of Holy Spirit guards us from elements of this present age that would try to come upon our heart and pull us down, worry us, and discourage us, okay? The Lord showed me, he said, Robin, just like you got a new rear end in your car, he said, guess what? When I make everything beautiful in your life, even your past, my glory can be seen in your past. And I was like, "Woo! that is amazing, God. Your glory is seen in my past. You make it beautiful. And I learned to love and I learned to live. Is that not powerful? Well, then this morning, God brought me to Psalm 49. And this is powerful. Listen to this. And I'm going to get into this Hebrew word for honor. And it just blew me away that God was having me talk about honor this week and about loving, living, and learning. And then today, God was showing me that He honors us. And this Psalm 149 is basically everything that I just taught you that when you can learn to love and learn to live with what has been in your past, that is grace and that brings honor. And it causes us to be able to be gifted by the Holy Spirit to see further into our future. You know, sometimes people feel stuck. They feel like they're on a hamster wheel and they can't get off. It's opportunity to receive God's grace in your past where you haven't received it yet, where you're still harboring issues in your heart and you haven't truly released others and you're not loving them and you're not living life, but you're held down by the clads and fetters of the enemy of your soul. This psalm is so powerful. It is going to be one of your go-to Psalms for 2023. And I am telling you, saints, 2023 might as well be titled A Year to Love, Live, and Learn. A Year of Grace. I'm telling you, saints, 
those that are really going to get ahead of where they've been in the past and to move forward into their call are going to be those that do the basic L's, three L's, love, live, and learn. Basic, basic, like basic training for the military. God keeps telling me he's taking us back to basics, to loving, living, and learning. That is grace. Loving, living, and learning. That's grace, plain and simple. So listen to Psalm 149, and we're going to get into a Hebrew word. Verse 1, Amplified Classic. Praise the Lord. Woo! Saying to the Lord a new song. Praise him in the assembly of his saints. Let Israel rejoice in him, their maker. Let Zion's children triumph and be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in chorus and choir and with the single or group dance. Let them sing praises to him with the tambourine and the lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. Woo! He will beautify. He makes everything beautiful in its time. Listen to this. Verse 4. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Salvation means prosperity, welfare, benefit, wholeness. It means everything, whatever you need. Listen to verse 4 again. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let them uh, and adorn the wretched with victory. Now listen to this. If you have felt like a wretch, he's going to adorn you. And what's interesting in that is that word adorn can be likened to honor. But we're going to get to the word honor in just a minute. And it means adorn. Okay. Verse 4. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation and adorn the wretched with victory. Let the saints be joyful in the glory and beauty which God confers upon them. Let them sing for joy upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and a two-edged sword in their hands. That's the word of God in authority. To wreak vengeance upon the nations and chastisement upon the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of irons. This is also a metaphor for binding every demonic assignment sent against you that has been operative in your heart with issues from your past. This psalm is about deliverance. It's about freedom and that God is going to exalt you. He's going to honor you. So listen to verse eight again and picture the attack of the enemy against your soul with the keys of the kingdom, Matthew 16, 16 through 19, where the enemy is bound and he cannot hurt you anymore because of the victory of Christ Jesus because of salvation. Remember, the name Jesus in Hebrew means salvation is in Jehovah. Whatever you need, it is in God. And again, the storm Elliot means the Lord is my God. You have to know that God is Lord of your past. He is Lord of your darkness. And you can love, live, and learn. Amen. And that gets you over the learning curve. Listen to verse 8. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of irons. Oh my goodness. The enemy is bound. And what has been speaking to you and hurting you from your past and causing insecurity, it is bound up. Shut up, devil. You ain't speaking to me no more. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I am not listening. Speak to the hand because it is gone in Jesus' name. I'm going to share this testimony before I read the last verse, and it is so powerful. About seven years ago, I was asked to speak a message in Gettysburg at a church, and when I went there, the enemy did a prophesy over me as I was there with my husband, Rich, and it's the common prophesy that is sent to discourage me and to want me to give up on the call. But no, 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 because of Holy Spirit in me. Amen. 
And so this minister that invited me, he prophesied over me that God was just going to sit me back and he was going to move my husband forward and my husband was going to preach and I was no longer going to preach. And it just grabbed a hold of me. And I went into travail for two hours, non-stop, <gasps> like that, crying. I could not cry because right before that, I had told Rich, I am done with ministry. It is over. I am tired of these insecure minister men that give me prophylize from the pit of hell. I am done, okay? It was one of those days. And I needed God to make my life beautiful in the midst of that crisis where I wanted to quit and I needed to learn to love and to live and to learn in that. And Holy Spirit took me into the veil where I was crying, <gasps> could not speak for two hours. Like, <gasps> <gasps> I mean, it was just a travailing of Holy Spirit to keep me from giving up on the call. Because I, th that was it. I was done. And God knew I was at my, I've had it, last straw, bye-bye. <laughs> okay? Going back to a regular job so I don't have to put up with all this hell all the time. All this crazy persecution and craziness from others from the pit of hell because of their own insecurities as they are projecting their own evil on me. I am sick of it, God. You know, I was having my Hannah moment, 1 Samuel 1, and God knew I needed to get it out. And so I could not pray for myself. I was so in travail. I could not even speak. And I just told Rich, I communicated in some fashion, you are going to have to pray for me right now. Something is wrong. I could not stop this massive travail and weeping. And it was just control. It took control. It just grabbed a hold of my body. And Rich started praying for me. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit started breaking through. And I went to go uh, get ready to minister. And that minister that invited me got in his vehicle to go to some other place to pick up a check from that place and to come back. And he was watching me on his television station. And right before I got on his TV station to preach from the pulpit, his pulpit, the Holy Spirit told me, he said, Robin, what is the message I gave you? And I said, oh my goodness, it's from lame to flame. And that's actually on my YouTube channel. And actually the actual message that I preached that night is on my YouTube channel under share. I preached it. I was getting ready to preach. And he and lame to flame was about the whole book of Ruth. It was about Ruth, and he said, "If I can use a, a Moabitist, a Moabite cursed woman, to be in the lineage of Jesus Christ, I can use you." And I just, woo, hallelujah! Oh, my worship went to high praise. See, I was entering Psalm forty nine in that worship because Holy Spirit had met ministered to me. And I began to enter that high praise. And I knew that my oppression was defeated because God had beautified me in that time to love and to live. And to learn that no matter what anybody else's opinion of Robin Kirby Gatto is, I know my Heavenly Father's opinion. I know Jesus Christ, my bridegroom's opinion. I know the opinion of Holy Spirit. And oh my goodness, I went into high praise and so I get up and I minister that message from lame to flame. And in the pulpit, while I'm ministering and starting that message, the Holy Spirit said, come against Jezebel in that man, which I call Jezebel in God's Bible School of the Prophets, Session 4, The Spirit of Knowledge on Amazon. And Rich turned white as a sheet because I am on that man's television station with him watching me and I am rebuking him at his own pulpit for what he has done in the name of the Lord and that it was not holy and it was of another spirit. Rich turns white as a sheet. He is not knowing what to do 
And Holy Spirit just came so powerfully that night. And it was also a drug rehab place. And at the end, all of these people came up that had been in the drug rehab place. And Holy Spirit prophesied to them because I was beautified in my past presently to be able to see in the future and know who Robin Curry Gatto is. And as a result, I prophesied by the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Understanding to other people and did deliverance and they got set free and they were totally changed that even the counselors came up to me after it was all done and they said, Robin, we have never seen this. And I went, seen what? They said, they've never talked, period. And they cannot stop talking since God ministered to them by the Holy Spirit through you, through the message and ministry. And I was like, Praise God, it was because that Jezebel spirit had them bound up where they were not in that high praise, but they were in the fetters and they did not know who they are and they needed to be beautified presently in their past. They had a car that had a crushed in rear end trunk and they needed it beautified. They needed to know the glory of God is their rear guard and that man saw me the next morning. He was so mad. He manifested on me and started going off on me. And I just put my hand up and I said, don't talk to me. Talk to the hand. I ain't talking to you in Jesus name, Jezebel. Woo! I got fired up and that thing shut up. It did not speak against me. And not only that, the minister seven months later, contacted me to come back up there to minister. And I said, no, thank you. No way in Jesus name. So watch this. This is absolutely powerful. We're going to the last verse. This is powerful. Psalm 149 verse nine to ex upon, execute upon them judgment written. He is, he, the Lord is the honor of all his saints. Praise the Lord. What? Listen, this is powerful. And I'm going to read the King James version. It's even more powerful. Listen to the Amplified Classic again. Verse nine, Psalm 149. To execute upon them judgment written upon who? The enemy of your soul, the adversary. He, the Lord, is the honor of all his saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! High praise. Watch, listen. King James Version. Powerful. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. What? Listen to this again. This is powerful. Get this in your knower. To ex upon who, execute upon the enemy, the judgment written, this honor have all the saints. What honor? The honor that God is going to defeat your enemy. He is going to fix your rear end past like the car. His glory is going to come and you're going to love and you're going to live and you're going to learn to love and live in that glory. Is that not powerful? I know, right, Marguerite? So the Hebrew word for honor here is hadar, hadar, and it means magnificent. It means ornament. It means beauty. It means comeliness, excellency, glorious, glory, goodly, honor, majesty. This comes from Hadard, which means to be, to swell up. That is what I put on the post this morning. To swell up. The anointing swells up and it destroys the yoke of oppression. Do you have a yoke around you? Psalm 52. Is it around your neck? Is it choking you? The anointing swells up. And pops it off. Woo! Destroys it. Listen to this word. Hadar, the root word. A primitive root word. And it means to have favor, honor, 
countenance, glorious honor and put forth. Is that not powerful? So let's end with the three Hebrew letters, hey, delet, resh. Hey, delet, resh. Hey, is stick, the stick man holding his arms up, worshiping. It means to reveal. Delet, the door, and means to open pathway and enter, to enter and pathway. Resh, the face of a man, head highest person. So the word picture is the revealed path of the Most High, which you have entered. Listen to this. The revealed path of the Most High, which you have entered. Listen, God's glory in your past causes you to enter loving and living in life. Is that not powerful? That is the honor of God where you enter that space of gratitude that you can love no matter what and you can live in great triumph as a result of it because you've learned how to love and live. That is honor. That is grace. That is power. It is deliverance. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I love you.